What I'm going to talk about today is recommended uh, nutrition, specifically micronutrients or vitamins. Antioxidants, they all fall in that same category. So we've been told ever since we were kids, your mother told you you need your vitamins, you need to eat your vegetables because you need your vitamins. So the question is, are the recommendations correct? And then the second question is, judged by what? Like long life, disease avoidance, performance, clearly not performance. We've only been measuring performance for the last, let's say, 100 years, really. And a lot of these recommendations were from way before that. Uh, so so let, me, let me start off with a study that came out in 2010. Now, this is in the journal, uh, the journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition. So prevalence of micro, micronutrient deficiency in popular diet plans. So uh, they compared the availability of micronutrients in, in varying different types of plans. So they compared uh, the DASH diet, the South Beach diet, the Atkins diet, which is basically just the ketogenic diet, uh, and I believe one other DASH sub, no, it was, it was those three. So DASH and South Beach are heavy in uh, I, I think dash is pretty much all, all vegetables and some meats and then um, South Beach is somewhere in between and Atkins is primarily meats and uh, animal products and then um, animal proteins I should say and then it's get my microphone a little closer to me yeah uh, and then uh, vegetables so what, what, was, what was looked at was to get the recommended daily values. What was required? How, what was the nutrient value that was required? Um, how many calories were required for somebody to get this, this level of nutrients from the uh, recommended daily intakes? administered by the FDA or published by the FDA? So the answer was 27,000 calories of whole foods would need to be ingested on average to get to the minimum dosages of the 27 micronutrients. 27,000 calories per day. So my question when, when reading this, now of course the conclusion of the study is, so people definitely need to take a multivitamin. Or, the recommended daily intake by the FDA is something wrong with it. That doesn't make any sense because uh, last I checked, Homo sapiens were thriving on this planet, and uh, they didn't. They certainly didn't eat 27,000 calories per day. And also, you have to consider that just about anybody from just about any place maybe ate one or two different types of things. If you were a Native American, you ate bison. And maybe some kind of berries or plants when they were blooming, like for a couple weeks. That's about it. And if you're a Viking, you were eating whale blubber. Uh, if you were, uh, you know, so Nordic countries, I shouldn't call them Vikings. I'm not sure if that's offensive or not. Actually, they should find that pretty cool because Vikings are awesome. Uh, the, uh, uh, let's see, if you were from, you know, the Mediterranean, you ate fish, because that's what was there. So the idea that these micronutrients are just so required for, for disease avoidance is kind of strange, kind of silly, and it seems an awful lot like the people who wrote those recommendations were like in the vitamin sales business. It just seems that way. I mean, hey, that's conspiracy theory. And maybe these things were developed out of some sort of responsibility, uh, though you know we don't we don't really know. These were came up a long time ago. But then after this, there was a 2011 study from the University of Minnesota, which showed that people that took multivitamins died younger than people who did not take multivitamins. The same year, the Cleveland Clinic came up with uh, vitamin E 
being attributed to higher prevalence of prostate cancer. Um, and these recommendations may all go back to actually, or, or at least the, the higher levels, the talk track about vitamins. It became much more popular in the 1940s when Linus Pauling started saying if you have 10 times the recommended daily allowance of, of uh, uh, vitamin C, you're never going to get a cold, or if you have a cold, it'll go away. And that was tested a number of times after he said it, and uh, that was found to be untrue. Though it was exciting, and possibly the press picks up on exciting things more often than they pick up on, uh, you know, something that's not so exciting or bad news. So, so it, it was hopeful, and um, then after that was pretty well disproven, uh, Professor Pauling started saying that vitamin C was also the cure for cancer, which was also very quickly disproven. And uh, the, you know, despite winning, I think it was two Nobel Prizes, he uh, wasn't very popular after that because he's, he just kind of made these things up. And he had an interesting argument about antioxidants. So this is really why we talk about antioxidants. Antioxidants are really where electrons are borrowed uh, to stop something that is oxidizing. So again, interesting theory. Now that also is predicated on the idea that you have inflammation. You're oxidizing on the inside of your body. Well, if you have an anti-inflammatory diet, like a ketogenic diet or a carnivore diet, well, then you don't have inflammation. So what would you need antioxidants for if you're not oxidizing? You wouldn't. So, also, there's sort of a logic problem that you need to have this one thing to keep from all these things that come from vegetables which are poisonous from hurting you. So you have to have derivatives of other vegetables and fruits, the antioxidants, to protect you from these things. Which just seems illogical to me. Uh, and it's a bit of an oversimplification, but ultimately, uh, even the Harvard School of Public Health has said some pretty um, strong things about antioxidants and vitamins in general. And uh, just pointing out, it's not saying don't go and take any of these things, it's just saying there's a lot of hype there, and there may not be the validity there that you are uh, you are looking for that may be protecting you. So hence a falsehood to fitness episode on vitamins and micronutrients.